God bless you. Hey, everybody. So good to be here. So glad that uh, you're here this morning and excited about the Word of God. I don't have a PowerPoint, so I'm just going to ask Pastor Bland if he would um, put Daniel chapter 5 up on the screen. And so we'll go from there. Have you been enjoying the study uh, uh, that we're in? Uh, and so we're in the captivity stage. And um, I don't know when, when you used to being free. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. When you used to being free, you end up being captive. That's not a fun thing. Although, you know, sometimes the mentality that people have, they're captive in their mind. Y'all know that? People are walking around enslaved in their mind. And that's not good either. That's not good either. Sometimes we're slave to our thoughts. Sometimes we're slave to our money. Sometimes we're slave to our job. Sometimes we're slave to our family. And sometimes, you know, we have to reassess, reevaluate how we're going through life and what we're going through life. And then we now sometimes we got to lose ourselves from some of this stuff. You know what I'm talking about? As it would be truly free. It would be truly free. The Bible says, whom God said free, he is free indeed. Free indeed, free indeed, free of a lot of things that uh, um, people uh, take to heart. A lot of things that people are walking around in misery, they don't have to be. They don't have to be. So we thank God for his goodness. We thank God for how he continues to bless us. And this morning, we are uh, in Daniel chapter 5. Now, up to this point, uh, Daniel's chapters 1 through 4, we have had an account of Nebuchadnezzar. And you know, we spent some time uh, talking about Nebuchadnezzar, and, and these chapters uh, have an account of the life of Nebuchadnezzar, who was the first Babylonian king to rule over those who were captive uh, in uh, Babylon. And so as we were looking, as we were looking uh, at his life, it, 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 we talked about several events that occurred in the life of Nebuchadnezzar, and those events eventually brought him down to his knees where he had to admit that God was God. You know, and we said he gave his own testimony, went out of his mind, had to come back to himself and realize that God, the God of Israel, is the one to be worshipped and the one to be praised. So now when we get to Daniel chapter 5, uh, this account, we, he, he passes over several kings. So you have Nebuchadnezzar, and then, but there are kings in between. There are a lot of kings in between, but he passes over all of those kings and goes all the way to the end to Belshazzar. Belshazzar was the last of the kings of uh, the uh, Chaldeans, of the Babylonians. So when we open up, in Daniel chapter 5, Belshazzar, his wives, his concubines, we already know when you get, get hit, so you already know there's Belshazzar, his wives, and his concubines. It's getting ready to be some showing out going on. And you know how we are. We like to show out in front of people, don't we? So his wives, his concubines, and then he had a thousand people that were guests at a feast. So they're guests at a feast. You know you got a feast going on. What you got going on? You got eating, drinking, and being married. Now you know if it's some drinking and some women and some men and some, there's some foolishness going on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm, I'm thinking about this golden image that he saw with the kingdoms. So Babylon has been conquered by the Medes and Persians. Not yet. Okay, so Not Bel yet. Belshazzar is the has last succeeded. King. He has succeeded Nebuchadnezzar. He's the last and king. So still in okay. They're still in power. Okay, that's what. However, we, they're still in power. However, the <laughs> the Medes and Persians are they're encamped around them. Now, he eating, drinking, and being married. But there's danger right outside your door. 
There's danger right outside your door. Talk about how wise, how, how unwise. And so um, Babylon, like so many others, had boasted that it was impregnable, that no one could get inside. That, and then they boasted that they had enough food and something did happen. Oh, my God, this is so funny. This, 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 these few chapters sound so much like what's going on today, doesn't it? They boasted that they had so much food stored away to feed the population that uh, it would last for 20 years. If something happened, we'd be all right. You know, we'll, we'll be okay. And so in Daniel chapter 5, let's, let's just start there. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem. That the king and his princes, his wives and his concubine might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. So Belshazzar, we're talking about the king, who was supposed to be wise, but we see now he was really silly. Belshazzar knew that the army, as Pastor Bland was alluding to, he knew that the army was encamped outside, but he was indifferent to the danger that they posed. And so he, he basked in his self-confidence. Belshazzar had been indifferent to the information God had given his grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar, in his dream. So if we go back, if we go back and we remember, you were talking about the image. In the dream, it was decreed that the head of gold was going to be replaced. Y'all remember that? That the head of gold was going to be replaced by the breasts and arms of silver, which would have been an inferior nation. And that's the thing about it. You know, you, you're so caught up in your confidence, you're so caught up in your confidence that here's someone that, who's inferior to you, they come in and replace you. You're so caught up that you're not prepared, you're not preparing for what could occur. And so that nation was the Medes and Persians. And so Nebuchadnezzar had decreed that all people, y'all remember that, he lost his mind, he had decreed that all people, let's go back to Daniel 3. Look at Daniel 3 and verse 29. Everybody, give respect to the God of the Jews. In Daniel 3 and 29. <clears throat> now remember, Nebuchadnezzar is the king. He can make any kind of decree he wants to. So when he lost his mind for those seven years and he came back to himself, he said, look, therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything, which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego should be, shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Why do you think that it takes so long, or sometimes, most, I guess most times, people never come to it? To, for, for us as human beings to recognize God as God? I think a lot of times, and this is me personally, a lot of times, uh, we, we know we don't like to say it, but we kind of think we, we put ourselves at the same place as God. You know, we, we, we absolutely do. We just... Uh, we think God is like us. That's why we're so pitiful when trouble comes. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And let me correct that. And, and, the, and Daniel 3 and 29 was after he had delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the furnace. What I see is it's so, it's so entrenched in selfishness because folks can see your mama, daddy died. 
But then when something happened to them like that, they fall out, they can't stand up. Well, you know, what was all that when man, you know, I love mine just like you love yours. And I think it's intrigued, like you said, I think it's called wrong assessment of who we are, not worshiping God, not, and then we got so much false worship. Like I said, I'll look, the, I ain't got nothing against the praise dancing and all that, but when I think that worship, Mother Helen, is little girls up here in tight clothes and all the flags and all that, and I think worship is all the choir and everything, then I don't know real worship when I see it. And real worship is, is just giving God uh, credit for who he is. And the thing about it is, is that it's the stuff you can't see that gets you. And you don't, I can say, and I can put on a show, but what's really up here, this, this is what, what's he, in my heart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, that, that's what really counts, mm -hmm, you know. So mm -hmm. I guess it's just so easy to put on a show. It is. It is. It is. So Nebuchadnezzar made this decree after the deliverance of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay? But as the years pass, as, you know, the years pass, some, we forget. And so Belshazzar, his grandson, the decree had been made. But that decree had been long forgotten. There had been kings between Nebuchadnezzar. That decree had been long forgotten. And so Belshazzar, and I think this is kind of uh, akin to what you were just discussing, he treated the God of Israel with disrespect. And sometimes that happens. You've seen that people do it, and sometimes they do it unknowingly. And sometimes they do it, and they know what they're doing. They treated God with arrogant disrespect. Arrogant disrespect. You go. You, 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 you. Now, Nebuchadnezzar, he, 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 when he besieged Jerusalem, you go to the temple. You already, you take the vessels out of the temple. You know, vessels that's used to honor God. You take them out of the temple. And then now Belshazzar, you come all the way to this time where Belshazzar is showing out in front of people. He's showing out. You go get the vessels. Go get the vessels. He brings them to the feast. They start drinking out of them like they're drinking out of Dixie cups. And so while they're drinking out of the vessels, they start praising their gods. He had no, no, just reckless disregard for God's stuff. And so it says here, he commanded them to bring the stuff, showing out. They brought them. They brought them. I'm in verse 3. <clears throat> then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Their actions were absolutely blasphemous. And Lady Deborah, basically, we, we're doing the same thing today. It's hard to have somebody talk to you about God and don't ask you for some money. <clears throat> I've heard some good stuff. It looked like it was good. It was kind of okay and everything. And next thing I know, and if you'll send for this CD, if you'll do this, if you'll send this money, if you'll plant this seed, if you you do. And basically, it's because you you putting your hope and trust in that money. You don't. It's just sad. Say, 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 say that again. I say it's just sad. I say it's hard to be ministered to, for somebody to talk to you about God without money being involved. Oh, okay. Okay. You got money being involved in it. You know, they always talk about you got to support the work of God. You know, begging. Begging. You well, want I you to take your hard-earned money that, you know, and I guess the older you get, the more valuable money you get. Because I don't feel like going out to get it. When I was young, I felt like it was going to be an endless supply of it, and I go out here, if, it, if I blow this, I used to just spend money and just don't even worry about it. Be broke for two or three days before payday. We'll have another payday coming. But no, that, that's, that's stupid. 
Well, too, I think the sad thing also is that you uh, prey on people who uh, then they believe in magic beings. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's sad. It's just sad. It's just sad. Kind of like what's going on right now. Person who asked. I understand what you're saying, but you got to understand this right here. You don't know any better than your teacher. People think they do, but you really don't know any better than what you're being taught. And if that's what you're being taught, then that's what you think. And you think that's faith in God by you priming the pump. If I put this in, in there, then it's something going to come out. And that's what you've been taught. That's what I was taught. Okay. And I believed it for a while. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I think, too, we say lack of faith, but I think a lot is lack of maturity as well. You know, spiritual maturity. So there are some things you have to begin to know for yourself. And the way you get to know those things for yourself, so you sometimes you got to pick up a book, you know, you got to understand, you have to read with understanding. If you don't, you have to, you know, get someone to help you. Uh, Brother Alex. I, as a child, eight, nine, ten years old, I remember Reverend Ike, 93 years old, he was a Well, see, you're a little, you, you're a little, oh, uh, I, you're a little more uh, advanced then. But you know what? I think, I think everybody. I remember a Mike too, and I believe everybody felt that way, but they still were sending something. Because if you ain't got nothing else to stand on, you know why they do it, Pastor Bland? It's the same way they, because they do. It's the same thing about grace. They do it. Just in case. Well, you know, desperate, des Just desperate times call for desperate measures, okay? How many times have we seen, and I'm probably going to do it too, is that a person gets sick, you know what I mean? And basically they don't told you they can't do nothing. But it's a place over there in Houston. You see what I'm saying? MD Anderson, and if you go over here, it might, you know, and you, you don't go for what you know. Well, Pastor, are we just going to keep you at home and pray over you? The devil is a lie. I'm going to call somebody else in to pray, not y'all. <laughs> you are doomed. <laughs> you are doomed. So, y'all, so we, we, you were at the feast. So, uh, at the feast. Without warning, let, let, let's talk about this, though. Uh, let me go back and talk about this a little bit. How, um, you know, he, he, let's talk about alcohol for just a second. And how, y'all know how they say alcohol gives you liquid courage? And what does that mean? What does that mean in your own words, Carl Ray? Uh-huh, liquid courage. Mm-hmm. It's going to make you do some things that you wouldn't ordinarily do. Exactly. When you say that the liquor calls you to do it. Exactly, exactly. And that's just some things we, we really need to think about, uh, which is like why they say a lot of people drink. Because, uh, you know, it releases some of those inhibitions that you have. So you get a little taste of alcohol, and you begin to do and say some things. People who are normally quiet, oh, my God, give them a drink. I know we, we could always tell when my dad had, had, had a beer, just one beer. And my dad was a different kind of person. You know, he was more jovial. You know, he would talk a little more. And uh, it was just, you know, you could just tell the difference. So that's what's happening here. Well, Nebuchadnezzar uh, with uh, Belshazzar, you all, you all, you 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 hyped up because you've been drinking, 
and you're hyped up because you're in front of people that you want to show out. Those are, the, those are dangerous combinations, dangerous combinations. I, I think that a person that's a leader always needs to be aware, I am the leader. You see what I'm saying? And to bring that down to just common denominator, Mr. Davis, the man, a man, if you're a man, you're a leader because God made you that. Not that you've been acting like it, but God, man is the head of woman. And so, and, and that's the reason I was thinking about like the drinking. If you, it's not a good idea to drink at the office parties with the people because you're gonna say something, gonna do something that's gonna make them disrespect you or, or whatever. And so if, if you're a leader or whatever, you just need to be aware you do. Because uh, it's just hard to lead when people don't respect you. It, that's, a, that's true. True statement. Yeah. True statement. So out of nowhere, they're all partying. Everything is hyped up. Everything is lively. You can kind of imagine it in your mind. This is having a good time. This is having a good old time. Without warning, a human hand appeared over in the area where maybe let's just over let's over here like where that uh, speaker is. This is a human hand appeared in an area of the wall that was illuminated by a lampstand. This is, you know, I'm thinking God. God has such a sense of humor. He does it for effect. You put a lampstand over there because I want you to see. I want you to see this. Lady Deborah, I think that's what happened to black people. <laughs> that we were really blessed until we stop worshiping God. Mm. And, I, and I'm understanding over here what worship is. All they want to talk about at church is sin. Don't sin. But the thing about it is, there's nobody that don't sin. So they really, they're sending you down a yellow brick road. You know what I mean? Instead of teaching you righteousness, they teach you, te teach you sin. And so, um, my thought left. Go ahead. Okay, and so, uh, and that hasn't helped anything, has it? No, it hasn't. Uh, so the hand appears. All of a sudden, everything that was so lively, it stopped. And everything just got deathly quiet. Oh, I know what it was, Lady Deborah. When we worship God, then we recognize God for who he was. Mm -hmm. We were no better people. We still had Buford's Cafe down there. Folks were drinking and cutting folks and stuff like that. I'm not saying that, but even the drunk recognized God as God. And we live in a time now where folks feel like, like you said, they God. They mm -hmm. God. They folks ain't thinking about coming to church unless they're getting married or, or, or somebody getting buried. And they hold the church in dis they disdain and disrespect. Oh, you're a preacher? You, you see? And they don't. And I think, and that's what happened here, I think, is that Nebuchadnezzar, he saved the kingdom for a while mm -hmm. because he gave God his worth. Mm -hmm. He got to give God his credit. Mm -hmm. God, don't, God don't expect me to be nobody. He know I'm nothing. Look at me. Know I'm nothing. But if I will recognize <clears throat> him as God, I'm, I'm going to leave this alone, but just look at our situation. Certainly we were not godly uh, or holy or anything, but by, by being taught by our parents and recognizing God as God, God reached down and picked us up. You, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we lost now, black people and stuff, because nobody don't want to, they don't believe it. They don't believe that God is God. They feel, you know, they, they bought this humanistic thing and you know, you can tell by the videos and all that. Everybody wants the cars. And, and the thing about it is, you get so blind that you're blind. All these folks that we look up to, their lives ain't no better. Pimp C, he about going by four Bentleys and stuff. You die in your 20s. Tupac, it, it, it's not the formula for success. Whitney Houston, all these folks we look up to because they've gone out here and got everything that this world got. Look at their life. So... I don't, I don't know, man. It's just, I think it's our, our mission or our uh, 
purpose in life is to being led by God to lead people back to worship. Mm-hmm. Not, not to uh, have big programs or not to uh, uh, try to impress folks or nothing, but if on this corner, if we can, through God, lead folks back to, we'll help people. So, so is what you're saying, or you all tell me, do you think what he's saying, or, or do you think this is, has, has the, validity in, the validity in this, is the more blessed we become, the farther away from God we get? Do y'all think that? That's, that's, uh, that's for discussion. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think it's how you think. Okay. And I think our thinking is so messed up. You see? And to go back to our churches, our churches have become so materialistic. Whoever has the nicest building, whoever has the most members, whoever has, you know, the stuff, that's the signs of success right there. And not how you think. Because as a... God, yeah. As a man think of it in the heart, so is he. And, and we have, I think we have diminished the value of your, your, how you think. Because, Edna, you know, I mean, shoot, 60s, 70s and stuff like that, we ain't had nothing. But it was the way we thought. Our thinking brought us up out of, and, and it was easy because we put it in God's hand. But now we want to handle it ourselves. And you see where we are. Mm-mm-mm. We got more money than we ever had. We got better stuff than we ever had. But we, we, oh, we so messed up. Okay, Brother Alex and Pastor Blaine, uh, microphone. Just a second. I, I agree what Pastor has said, but my thing is this. My life has improved since coming to Manasseh because I've heard the word of God. Nothing else. Nothing else has improved, but my life and spirit has improved because I've hearing the word of God and being taught his word. And it's as simple as that. Thank God. Um, so they're at the, fest, they're at the feast. Everything stops when they see the hand on the wall. Uh, they stare in amazement. Because the hand is not just there, but the hand is writing something. So the hand is there. It is only just a hand. I can't even imagine. I'm scary. And so uh, Belshazzar, Belshazzar was scary too. <laughs> the Bible, let's look at and see what the Bible says. It says, in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over uh, against the candlestick, against the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then him that had the liquid courage, him that had called for the vessels, showing out, his whole countenance changed, and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote one against another, literally, just knee knocking, just scared. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. They always want to, now you want to come to your senses, but you want to, you want to heap on um, uh, accolades, you want to heap on everything to the, to the person that can tell me, because you see, he didn't know what it was. So now, you want to know what it says now. But you so reckless uh, beforehand. Then came in the king's wise men, but they could not. This is familiar story. This is familiar. They could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. You see, if he had just gone back, and remember, his grandfather, 
If he had gone back to Nebuchadnezzar, you would have known the history of Nebuchadnezzar with Daniel, and, and you would have known the history of Nebuchadnezzar with those, astro those, those astrologers. You would have known that they couldn't they interpret it back then, and they sure can't interpret it now. He didn't believe it, Lady Deborah. He didn't believe it. When I got sober, the, folk, the stuff these folk were telling me was the same thing my mom and them had told me. Same thing, if you don't believe. And so now, the banquet hall that was such a party is being turned into a courtroom by God. God is somebody. I'm telling you, God will. He'll take every his situation and make it something totally. He will do it. And so now, you know, you in the courtroom, you're about to be found guilty. And so now he's overcome with terror because he know this cannot be a good thing. This cannot be a good thing. I tell you, you see a hand coming out, Pastor Bland now. Y'all, Pastor Bland, I always tell him a testimony. But, you know, there's some drugs that can make you see some things. There's some drugs that can make you see some things that's not even really there. Mm-mm. But this had nothing to do with the liquor that he was drinking. This is God trying to tell him something. Now, I want you to know that God will get your attention. God will get your attention. Sometimes when you least expect it. Songwriter said, God is trying to tell you something. God is trying to tell you something. It behooves all of us to be in a place that when God speaks, that we try to hear what God is saying. That we try to hear what he's saying. He's always speaking. Now, let me just say that. He's always speaking one way or another. He's always speaking. We need to be found in a place to try to hear God. What is it? that you want me to get out of this? What is it that you want me to see? What is it that you want me to know from this situation? And he will, he'll reveal it to you if you just humble yourself. You have to be in a place of humility, which Belshazzar was not. You know, his, his grandfather was guilty of pride. So Belshazzar had pride in him. You so proud that you just doing what you, just anything you want to do. And so this scene, as I said earlier, is familiar. They couldn't interpret what was going on. And so the rest of the palace heard about the crisis in the banquet hall. This is something that's going on. And so the news got to the queen mother. Look, now the queen, and I'm in verse 10, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. And she just uh, really optimistic about the whole thing. You see, she thinking it's gonna be all right. Well, uh, no, <laughs> no, ma'am. There is a man in thy kingdom. You see, Belshazzar I didn't even know. This how this tell you how far removed he was from what his gra his grandfather had done. He didn't even know about Daniel. Now, how could you live in the kingdom with the greatest man, the man of God who had, been a hit, who had helped your grandfather, who had advised your grandfather through all of his stuff? Because by now, Daniel is an old man. How could, you, how could you live in the kingdom and not even know about Daniel? You see, he was prideful and he was self-confident. She said, there is a man in thy kingdom and whom is the spirit of the holy gods and in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he shall show the interpretation. And so they call in Daniel. She suggested that, and certainly they called Daniel in, who, who was the wisest man in Babylon. But he didn't know it. Belshazzar didn't know it. And so... Um, it was to his shame that he only knew, you just, just, you know, somebody had to tell him about him. And it was a tragedy that he would ignore, as I said, one of the greatest men in history and turn to him only in the last hours of his life when it was too late. Don't let it be said. Don't let it be said, y'all. 
when God, oh my God, when God is all, is, is just talking and, 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 and moving among us, when God is moving, don't let it be said that it's too late. It's too late. The scenario wasn't a new one for Daniel. Daniel used to it. Y'all just got me here. Even though he was in high power. Y'all got me here. You call on me when it's something like this. So Daniel, he was from, you know, he, he's a boy. Okay, you, you need a revelation. You get Daniel who's wise and competent, and then you have a ruler who is fearful and frustrated. Then they want to call, 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 call you in. So uh, this is what happened. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel, which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jewry? I have even heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee, and that light and understanding, look, you know, just talking up to him. You know, probably still a little high, but, you know, probably a little sobered up after uh, a little sobered up after he saw the hand. You know, uh, I have even heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. And now the wise men, the astrologers have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of thee that thou canst make interpretation and dissolve doubts. Now, if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. That didn't mean nothing to Daniel. It mean nothing to Daniel. I don't need that. That Y'all can have all of that, the personal wealth. And that's what Pastor Bland is what people are caught up in now. You, you can have all of that, the personal wealth. You can have all of that political power, all of that stuff that you think people are impressed by. I don't need any of that. Daniel, or you want to heap all of that on me now? No, Daniel was respectful to the king, but he was not afraid to tell him the truth. Look, let me just tell you, uh, I, I, I'm a man of God. Daniel had to be a great man of God because he was in, put into so many pressing situations. I'm a man of God. And let me just tell you, I mean, you know, Daniel answered and said to the king, let thy gifts be to thyself. Keep your stuff. Keep your stuff. Mm -mm. Let devil, you know, Daniel probably never forgot being in that, that land then. You know, that, they, call, they used to call that the old landmark. Whenever you get in trouble and you think about where God brought you from, and I guess that's where they get the song that you can't make me doubt it. <laughs> okay. I know too much about it. And so, so, so Daniel answered and said, you can just keep your stuff. Yet I, I will tell you, though, I, I will tell you what the writing uh, on the wall is. O thou king, I'm in verse 18, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. Look, let me tell you. All of this came because God allowed it. Mm -hmm. Daniel helped him to put things in perspective. Nebuchadnezzar, you know, he, he, he realized that. King, you're where you are. After Daniel had to tell him, you're where you are because God allowed you to be there. God allowed you to be there. God, the sovereign God of Israel, allowed you to be there. He's not just sovereign over Israel. He's sovereign over the whole, every nation. And so, O thou king, the most high God, gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all peoples, nations, and language trembled and feared before him. Whom he would, he slew, and whom he would, he kept alive. And whom he would, he set up, and whom he would, he put down. But when his heart was lifted up, and his mind hardened in pride, he was disposed from his kingly throne. And they took him from his glory. They took his glory from him. Look, pride. Pride is the root of problems. That when you thinking you, you got it. Pride is at the root of stuff. Yeah, pride is something that you have to get to the root of before you can get some help. That you can be in that state and still worship God. Say again? Do you think that you could be proud like that and worship God? I don't think so. I, I think it's antithetical. No, I, don't, I don't think so. Yeah. No. 
Nebuchadnezzar showed his pride by boasting about his achievement. Y'all know Nebuchadnezzar said, I did all of this. I did all of this. And God had to take him down a notch. He sent him out to the fields, just like the animals. Take him down. He had to, uh, he boasted about his achievement. So anytime you take the credit away from God, something is wrong. Something is wrong. And so go back over to Daniel 4. Uh, let's look at verse 29. We just read this. Uh, Daniel 4, verse 29. This is Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 29 and 30. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? God had to show him. God had to show him. And so that pride God saw was in his heart. But Belshazzar displayed pride by desecrating those vessels from the temple of the Most High God and then treating the Lord with contempt. And so by using the vessels that had come out of the temple, uh, the king was guilty of both blasphem, blasphemy and idolatry. Because as he drank, they praised the gods of Babylon. And so he ignored, as I said earlier, he ignored what he knew about Babylonian history. All he had to do was go back and people tell him about what happened to his grandfather. He acted as though he was in command. And his life would go on forever. Lady Deborah, isn't that a common error a man know? That I think that what happened to another person ain't going to happen to me. I think so. I think so. I think so. I absolutely think so. But then when we look at, uh, he acted like his life was going to go on forever, not realizing that the very breath that he, and, and what we have to realize, our breath, every breath belongs to God. It all belongs to God. And so he says, Daniel, as Daniel continues to talk to him, he says, and he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like a beast and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the most high God ruled in the kingdom of men and that he appointed over it whomever he will. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. That's, that's telling. That's very telling. That's a lesson for us, y'all. That's a lesson for us. When it's something you know in your heart, and I pass the blame, you can go all the way back to when your grandmother, your great-great-grandmother, they believed in God and called on the Lord, and then now you acting like you don't even know God. You're like, like Mother Nan, like Mother Nan, she said it last Sunday. I, I took y'all to church. I, I, I read the word to you. And not like you didn't know. And now you're falling into trouble and you don't act like, well, how did I get here? Because you're not acknowledging God as God. You're not acknowledging God as God. And so uh, Daniel began to tell him the truth. He said, and thou, his son, O Belshazzar, have not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this, but have lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. They have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives, and thy concubines have drank wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, have thou not glorified. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Many, many tekel, you absurd, you farzim. Thank you, baby. This is the interpretation of the thing. Many. God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. That's just, there ain't nothing else you can say about that. Behind that, that just sound like the end. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel. He was true to his word, even though Daniel, you know, you could keep that stuff. But he went on, he clothed them with scarlet, 
and put a chain of gold around his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. And Darius, the Median, took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. So all of that <coughs> is just, it's the end. You waited too late. You called me in. I've been in your kingdom all along. I could have been telling you godly things all along. But you wait now while you, you get drunk. Then you want to act crazy. And then call me in. And so uh, it is what it is, y'all. Uh, let's, let's try to hear God while he's talking. Let's try to hear when, when there's a lesson. And sometimes, you know, it seems odd. It seems odd. Sometimes a lesson comes in odd places, in odd times, in odd ways. You know, everybody wants to spiritualize what's going on right now. I can't stand that. I can't stand that. Why you want to make it spiritual? It's a virus. It's a virus. God saw this day back in eternity. God saw this day back in eternity. You know, and so let's do what we know to do. Let's do what we know to do. We're the people of God. We're the people of God. And so let's do what we know to do. And let's, let's learn the lesson while the lesson is being taught. Give the Lord a hand. Praise everybody.